Hello, this is a short video on how to install a virtual machine inside the ASIT lab. Okay, what we're going to do is open up v uh, VMware Workstation 10 and you'll notice over here that there are no virtual machines. We're going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. And for this, we're going to walk through the virtual machine wizard. We're going to use the typical settings. Nice. Now, I will install the operating system later. This is so I will experience the full installation experience as intended by Microsoft. I am going to install a copy of Microsoft Windows 7, so there's no need to change this information. Naming the virtual machine. As for any class we use in the program, we use first initial last name, underscore what the operating system is. In this case, it's Win7 Enterprise, and I'm going to use number one at the end so I can identify this as my first Windows 7 Enterprise installation in the Windows 7 configuration course that we're going to take here it's uh, we're going to use more than one so next we choose the maximum size for a disk I am going to change this to 100 gigabytes and I am also going to store the virtual disk as a single file okay Next, this is a summary of the settings that we have chosen. Um, inside the lab, I suggest that you take this memory and change it to 768 megabytes instead of one full gigabyte. You do not need as much memory in a virtual machine as you would a physical install. Uh, 768 megabytes of memory is fine to use. I'm going for speed at this point, and this is the only virtual machine that's on this host machine right now. So, for the brevity of the video, I'm going to select one gigabyte, but you should choose 768 megabytes. Also, network adapter, we will change that to a bridged and replicate physical network connection. What this is going to do is give your virtual machine access to the internet and also give it its own virtual or I guess IP address. We'll go ahead and close and save that. Now once we finish this we're not done configuring you don't have an operating system installed on the hard drive plus you don't have anything in the DVD drive unless you actually have a physical disk I'm going to change this setting to use an ISO image in the laboratory in the classroom I will guide you to download the ISO images to your desktop if they're not already there so you just browse to the desktop and find the appropriate uh, ISO image. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. And I will power on the virtual machine and get the installation started. This is just warning you that there are removable devices plugged in. It's okay to just click OK. Now couple things to remember about a virtual machine. If you notice, um, the mouse pointer turns into a hand whenever I mouse over the installation window, the operating virtual machine window. If I click in there, then the virtual machine has focus. In order to remove focus from the virtual machine and put it back in the host, you have to push the control and alternate keys together and that will bring your cursor back. Okay, I'm going to pause the video recording every once in a while in order to save time. This is the initial installation window. You can set your language and the time and currency format, also the keyboard layout 
for us we can accept the defaults and then there's a button up here that says install now you should click that and then setup will start this is the end user license agreement I really strongly suggest that you do read the end user license agreement once at least once to any of the products that you're going to install um, you would be amazed at the rights that you do give away and never even read that you have given those rights away so go ahead and accept the license choose next next we'll choose a custom install so we can modify our drive options um, because this is a clean install and there's only one disk on this there is no need to do anything we could just simply click next and Windows will automatically configure the partition for us okay Okay, for bri video brevity, I just paused the video here and there so you didn't get to see the, well, you did get to see the entire installation, but you didn't get to have to sit with me and <laughs> wait for it to happen. Okay, now we're at the point where we're setting up a username and a computer name. You remember, every, th every computer needs a unique name on the network, otherwise we won't be able to have network connectivity. For the username, I want you to use student. You notice that Windows 7 automatically fills in the blank to call it student PC. I want you to change it to your last name, hyphen, your installation, and installation instance number. In my case, it's Heinz-Win7-1. So that will state that this is my first installation of Windows 7 on the network. Go ahead and click Next. Now we'll type a password. And you must, you absolutely must use the class word password. All right, here is the classroom password in the password hint. This actually does work with Windows 7. Um, if you use anything other than this, I will count professionalism points off. It must be capital P, lowercase, A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and then 01. Okay, uh, for your operating system, we'll use the recommended settings for updates, and we have to make sure that we choose the correct time zone. I've chosen Eastern Time Zone. I am picking the date, which today is August 28th at 9.25 a.m. When we select the current location of the network, we will use in the classroom always Work Network. Okay, Windows is finalizing some installation step. And finally, logging on to the desktop for the first time with your first user, student. Preparing the desktop. And finally, desktop loaded. Okay, now what we have here is access to the internet and the only reason I want you to have access to the internet right now is so you can perform updates first thing click the start button go to all programs and then Windows update and what I want you to do is check for updates 
for Windows only we only need the security updates we don't need all the uh, optional updates so once you have the installation done make sure you go ahead and you ke keep checking for updates and installing the updates until all of the updates are done all we need are those security updates for Windows only we do not need any optional updates and that more or less is installing Windows 7 for the supporting client operating systems class you will need at least two I would suggest that you have two virtual machines of a client operating system for each class uh, you may not need them you may not use them but it's a good idea to have them readily available and that's that